Hey guys, welcome to Geography 101. This is a case study in structural economic change, Detroit, Michigan in the USA. I think this is episode six of Geography 101. 19th century, mining was the main industry there. So this is a primary industry. Um, that's the word that I'm writing here that you can't quite see. Um, so iron and copper mining. In the early 1900s, Henry Ford set up the first Ford car manufacturing plant um, in Detroit and so began um, industrialization of Detroit. So throughout the 1910s, 1920s and 1930s more assembly line car factories set up so uh, Chrysler and General Motors set up factories in Detroit in the inner city area. So from the 1910s and 1920s, there was a lot of immigration. The population of Detroit increased a lot. So working class people moved into the area because of the relatively high wages provided at the car factories. During the roaring 20s, the economy boomed in Detroit and people came in to live the American dream. So Americans could afford the cars that they were making because they had high enough wages to buy the cars that were actually made in the USA. So due to a lot of immigration into Detroit, the population sharply rose and in the 1950s, the population was at its highest with 1,800,000 people. So Detroit reached its peak in around the 1950s, but inner city decay started and this led to the decline of Detroit, which I'll just go into more detail now. So globalization was really picking up in the 50s and 60s. Um, more free trade between countries and between continents. Um, so there was competition from Japanese and German car manufacturers. In the 1970s, oil and gas prices rose, so that meant that petrol and diesel was a lot more expensive. Cars made in the US weren't very efficient and they used up a lot of gas, so Americans could no longer afford American cars. Up until that point, the American car industry always had an internal market, so even if they weren't making many sales abroad, they were still selling a lot of cars in the country and there was no money going out to other automobile companies abroad. But then now, um, Americans were buying Japanese and German cars. So factories closed down and this led to deindustrialization. The big three car manufacturers in Detroit began losing money, so they began outsourcing their labour to countries where they could pay the workers less money because the US workers required a quite high wage. So factories in Detroit, in the inner city area, closed down. Another thing was desegregation in the 50s and 60s. So official segregation laws were dropped so black people moved to areas that had been predominantly white because now it was legal to do so um, they were trying to integrate and you know make a better place for everyone so unfortunately this led to racial tensions because white people are racist and so a lot of white people migrated to the suburbs um, and this created an urban donut so you can see here i'm drawing detroit um, there's the inner city there, and whereas previously it was mixed, white people are moving out to the suburbs. This is called white flight. Redlining made the situation even worse, so maps were made of areas based on demographics, um, which meant that people from inner city areas, which were majority um, black people or non-white people, um, were denied services such as taking out loans to get houses and starting up businesses and even things like supermarkets. Yeah, so a really useful piece of vocab here is white flight. Just remember that. So this added to the inner city decay that was occurring as a result of deindustrialization because neighborhoods with more people of color in them were neglected by the um, government and by businesses and investors and also they were more harshly policed. So as a result of this heavy policing and neglecting from the government, tensions rose in inner city areas and a police raid on in near west side um, in inner city Detroit 
um, resulted in um, race riots. So this was in the summer of 1967 and there were riots, so buildings burning down, um, violence and lots of damage to buildings and loss of human life. Um, thousands of people got injured and just over 40 people were killed. So another issue in the 60s was the war on drugs. Crack cocaine was readily available in the 60s, which led to social problems. Crack cocaine was also cheaper and so more available in inner city black neighbourhoods than powder cocaine was. The national government at the time was really racist. I mean, not that it isn't now, but it made the sentences for dealing crack cocaine a lot higher. So more inner city residents who were predominantly black um, were in prison. So less income was coming in to the inner city areas, leading to even more social decline and more crime. Um, and that just exacerbated the inner city decay. So going back to the timeline, um, I'm just jotting down what we just covered. So competition from Japanese and German car manufacturers and also the fact that US citizens could no longer afford US cars led to uh, deindustrialization in inner city Detroit. White people migrating out of the area, so white flight also exacerbated this issue and caused the race riots and also the war on drugs led to inner city decay even more. The race riots were in 1967. Overall, this resulted in an urban donut forming. Here I'm drawing Detroit, so there's the inner city area. There's a lot of urban decay going on there. So more people, especially white people, migrate out to the suburbs. Um, so the suburbs develop and are doing all right and the inner city area is decayed, so that's an urban donut. So here I'm just showing the cyclical economic change. So we've got from the 1910s to around the 1960s, boom. Um, so the economy is doing really well. There's a lot of technological growth and money coming in. Then from the 1950s, decay starts and a lot less money is coming into Detroit. And so this is the recession and it's all sad times. So Detroit is losing a lot of money and lots of people are migrating out. In terms of what economic sectors are prevalent in Detroit, we've got primary first there with mining and agriculture. And then when Henry Ford sets up, um, we've got secondary industry with the car manufacturing industry. And you can see that from about the 60s, 70s, it's kind of wiggly line, it's declining. Still present these days, but not that good. So the 21st century, in 2008, we have the global financial crisis, which even worsened the situation in Detroit. Um, in 2009, more than 80 Detroit schools, especially in the inner city area, closed. And this resulted in the cycle of poverty continuing as people couldn't get better qualifications in order to get jobs as deindustrialization was happening. And so people stayed poor. In 2013, Michigan State filed for bankruptcy with debts of 20 billion US dollars. Let's have a look at the future of Detroit. So Pure Michigan is a tourism scheme that aims to advertise and attract tourists to Michigan and Detroit is in Michigan, so that should help Detroit. And this is an increase in the tertiary sector of Detroit. So we've also got people coming in to do urban farming and set up gardens and places to grow vegetables. Um, so this is an increase in primary, in the primary sector of Detroit. Got some quaternary industry coming in with freshwater technology. So maybe the future of Detroit is looking a little bit brighter. So another thing is a possible regeneration of parts of Detroit. Uh, so a volunteer organisation called Motor City Blightbusters demolishes abandoned derelict houses in Detroit which cleans up the area and makes it more attractive for new investment. So yeah that's it from Geography 101 today. Thanks for watching, hope you do well in your exams and please subscribe.